Good morning. We had a lot of rain last night, which is good. I'm hunting today with uh, Awi and my son Yona and dogs Poe, Bob and Boo and Buck. Boo has not seen a pig to date. Well, not one that's alive. And Bob's only seen one. So this is the first time Boo's ever gone to country where there's bridges. Good dog. Come on, Boo. Okay, let him go now, son. See what, you, what he's going to do. Okay, Boo. What are you going to do, mate? Come on. Who come? You keep walking, son. Boo come. He's going, oh shit. Come on, Boo. First time on a bridge. Good boy. And a pet. Well done. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog, eh? Good boy. Good dog. Poe. Well, I was hoping to cross the river on the other side, but it's a fair raging, and as you can see there, that looks like one of the hand railings that they've built on the track further up has been washed away. So there must be quite a few slips. Bugger. Well, that spur is where I was going to head, but uh, this river's just uh, a wee bit gnarly. I could find a patch probably further down to cross, but I think we'll uh, find a different spot. Have a nice dry hunt. There once used to be a bridge here, but it got washed away like bridges do, and docks funding is so pathetically low these days. Uh, things like bridges in the uh, back country are not uh, able to be replaced anymore like they used to all the time. That includes dock staff being laid off too. It's great to have a, a government that uh, sort of realised the value of this resource, not just to hunters and trampers, but also to overseas visitors that come here each year and spend millions of dollars. There's a few goats up here, so hopefully those pups don't chase them. I've done no goat proofing at all yet on them. It's easy to see why overseas filmmakers love to come to New Zealand and film our country. What the hell are you doing, boo? What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? You know, the joys of being a pup, eh? Well, that panned out well, didn't it? <laughs> Come on. Come on. This is one of the old Mines. We're right on the mineral belt here, so there's a lot of old mines that uh, are still here today. And I can tell you from experience that they make a great shelter. You get caught out in the bush. There's another old mine in here. Well, this one goes back further. Whew. Yeah, she's a long way up there. Another great place if you get caught out up here for a sleep and away from the weather. Because this one actually goes down and then up. 
I've been trying to grow a beard like my mate Stu Driver. I think I've finally succeeded. Hello, I'm Stu Driver from Scotland. I've got Highland cattle. I talk like this. Actually, it's in the Irish, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Stu. Just taking the piss. Bit of old man's beard. Well, we are old men. Well, I am anyway. Dogs all in and no pig still. Oh, carry on. That'll lead you right up onto the uh, spur there, son. We're getting into pig country now, and the object of this hunt is to get Bob and Boo onto their first pig. Well, Bob's already been on one, but he wasn't actually on, he was just barking. And uh, when I was up here this time last year, I was catching quite a few smaller pigs, sort of around 30 to 50, 60. Doesn't seem to hold any big balls up here for some reason. But uh, the ideal size for training a dog would be that sort of size to start with. So hopefully all this climbing pays off, because there is a fair bit of climbing. Poe and Buck just shot off at a hell of a rate. Good job, Bob. You love that, didn't he? Well that's uh, Bob and Boo's first pig, it's only a wee one but that's exactly what I wanted, so it didn't have a negative uh, sort of uh, outcome, no body got hurt, just a little sour, normally you release this but as they haven't seen a pig before, it's the whole thing in training dogs and uh, now they know this is the target species I can start my stock proofing, man it's lucky if it's a 30 pounder but hey, I found out uh, very Quickly, these dogs aren't going to be bailing dogs. You don't want to let it go, did you? Good dogs, good dogs. Good dog, Bob. That's a good dog. Good dog. Leave it. Good dogs. And uh, we've got a little bit of pork to take home, too. Yeah. Right, we'll whip the guts out of this and we'll put it on my son's back because that's what he's for for caring. <laughs> yeah, good one. You hungry? Mm, I just had a sandwich. I was going to say you got a good feed on your back. <laughs> Ever tried raw pork? No. You interested in that idea? Not really. Didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Not for you, Boo. Get out of there. Boo! Get out of there. Good dog, good dog. You're a good dog too, Poe. You want to spend some lunch? <laughs> Is it a female or a male? It's under its tail there. Little crawly. Oh, there have been bigger ones in there too. But they can go back in the creek, son. Let him go. A dog's DNA, from its mouth to its bum, is 0.2% different from a wolf. Virtually the same. So it's natural for them just to hunt and do what they do. So when we're training our pig dogs, we're not really training them much that they don't already know. We're really basically training them not to target certain species, obviously like sheep, and goats, and deer, and anything else other than a pig. So the process today for Boo and Bob has been, we're allowed to catch that, we've seen our master kill it, normally I wouldn't kill a pig that small if I could let it go, but uh, it was important that they saw that process as well, so we've killed that, and um, they get a pat and an okay, it's a good buzz for them. There's no negative response from their master, and the other dogs are all doing it, so that's all good. You're okay. 
Brother Bob's been on many times, haven't you, Bob? So we've got his first pig up here. Well, good result today. Boo's learned a lot. Not only how to cross a bridge, but what we're all about, catching wild pigs. In another year, it'll be interesting to see how he's going. But so far, so good. Come on, Boo. Come on, boy. That's a good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Yeah, it's a good dog. You're okay, mate. Nearly there. Come on, boo. Where you go? Where you go? I seem happy to be on the ground. Good dog, boo. It wags the tail, eh? Good dog, boo. Yeah, it's a good boy. Oh, I can back up again now, boss. Good dog, boo. Don't worry, son, it'll grow one day. Oh, is that what it is? Pig lice. Yep. Sweet. That's the way. Nice. Scrape it off. Quick. That looks great, son. That's awesome. That's good to get on the fire. Make a strip about that thin. Yeah, there you're talking. Being green, it can sustain a bit more heat than if it was just dead wood. So when you're tying your legs up, you pretty much do it the same way as when you carry a pig out of the bush. Just cut the tenons there, behind. Got your loop. I'm using a bit of flax. And then that'll go inside the cut. Like so. Put one up here. And another half hitch. Going to make a nice apple sauce to go with our wild pork. Well, I put a couple of wire tails across and uh, I'm just going to let these guys sit on here for a while and then come back to them and do a bit of work on them with a the knife. This has already started to crackle up while we were singeing the hair off it, but I want to help it a little bit with a few cuts, just like this. Go this way as well, make some sort of diamond shape. Gonna be generous with the salt. I'm just rubbing a bit of fat into this pork. We'll sort of glaze it. And we'll glaze that again later on. We'll keep on adding to it. And put that back over the fire now. Let that fat soak in over here. That apple wood really adds flavour to the pork. It's my favourite wood for smoking anything. Fish, pork, venison, beef. You want your fire to be burnt right down so you're cooking over embers like this and not big orange flames. Otherwise you will burn your meat. And those embers put out a hell of a lot of heat. You work on really per kg about one hour when you're cooking with an oven, but outside in a fire like this, you could allow a bit more because the heat isn't contained the same. Yana's just harvesting some watercress. Water's boiling for the watercress, whack some salt in there. Watercress is a superfood. It has so many good things in it, I couldn't start to begin to tell you if I had to list them all, but it's a really healthy tucker and it tastes great with pork. Yeah, nice clear fluid. She's ready for eating.
the moment of truth. But the meat is tender. Oh man, look at that. Wow, that's awesome. Let's test the cameraman. <laughs> See what his verdict is. Open your mouth, son. It's really good. Mm hmm. Really tender. It's hard to believe this animal was walking around the hills this morning. That's the difference between a um, like a 40 pound pig or a 30 pound pig and say a 120 pound pig. You don't have to hang the meat to relax it. The meat is already tender and that is just like so soft. Right, we'll cut the rest of it up and we'll start eating. Gotta have the apple sauce. Get out of there, Bob. Not gonna happen, mate. Not gonna happen. Hell no. Try some. Zooming in close for a facial expression and a rating, an honest rating. I mean, absolute the truth. Exactly, you know, 10 being amazing, like you've never had before ever and one being absolute shit that you're going to throw up. <laughs> A ten. You're not just saying that? No. Happy days. You know what? I have to give it a 10 too. I've never had pork so good, eh? Bob, did you hear that? Did you hear that, Bob? It was a 10. Oh, <laughs> you were nearly lucky then, weren't you, Bob? Sit down, Bob. Get it down, down, down. Good dog. <laughs> you think Bob deserves a bit? Well, you can wait till we're beaten. That's the rule with dogs, eh? You get first, you feed them last, so they know where they are in the scheme of things. Well, we're going to round off this week's clip by putting my son outside of his comfort zone. He's going to actually talk on the camera. Well, he's going to talk loud and he's going to talk clearly. <laughs> well, folks, that's all for this week's Play Tall Stories clip. Hope you enjoyed. Be good, and if you can't be good, be careful. See you later. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs>